So hi everyone and welcome to the session of PIB Current Affairs. In today's session, we are going to discuss some more questions from the PIB news, which are relevant, which are important for all the government exams. All right, so let's begin with the session without any delay. But before we begin, if you are coming here for the first time, do subscribe to the channel and press this bell icon. You can also join this telegram group. Here you will get the PDF of this session after the session is completed with marked answers. And you can also ask your doubts here. You can also follow me on Instagram here also are, you can ask any question. So let's talk about the very first question, which says with which of the following organizations, national center for good governance has signed an MOU to promote inclusive good governance for strengthening of local institutions and for effective implementation of government programs. So there are three objectives of this MOU, okay, inclusive good governance strengthening of local institutions and effective implementation of government program. And now guys, in this particular news, we don't have to go into the details of this MOU because that is not relevant for the exam. Just remember that National Center for Good Governance has signed this MOU with National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj. And of course, you should remember the objectives of this MOU. All right. Now talking about the National Center for Good Governance. So remember, uh, before this, we had National Institute of Administrative Research, NIAR, which was established in the year 1995 by Labasna, Lal Badur Shastri, National Academy of Administration. All right. And this National Institute of Administrative Research was re-christened to form National Center for Good Governance in the year 2014. All right. And this National Center for Good Governance, remember, it is an autonomous institute under the Department of Administrative Reforms and public grievances. It is headquartered in New Delhi. Its headquarter is in New Delhi mein hai. and secretary. Secretary in the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances is the ex officio chairperson of National Center for Good Governance. All right. Talking about National Institute of Rural Development in Panchayati Raj. So remember, it is uh, an institute under the Ministry of Rural Development headed by Mr. Giriraj Singh. It is nothing but a center of excellence for rural development in Panchayati Raj. And it is headquartered in Hyderabad. Okay, its headquarter is in Hyderabad. Mein. All right. So that's why, guys, the correct answer is what National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj. Option A. Now let's move ahead to question number two. With which of the following universities, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, which is headed by Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan, he is also the Minister of Education, as you all know, has signed an MOU to strengthen vocational and technical training framework. Jo vocational or technical training framework ko strengthen karne ke liye ye MOU sign hua hai with which university the question is asking this. All right. So remember the university is IGNU, Indra Gandhi National Open University. And this MOU as already the question says has been signed to strengthen the vocational and technical training framework. Remember the, the total period for which this MOU has been signed is 10 years. And remember the vocational education and training will be linked to higher education and it will enhance the employability of youths. Under this partnership, it will be done. And the trainees attached to the National Skill Training Institutes, ITIs, Pradhan Mantri, Kaushal Kendras and Jan Shikshan Sansthan will be benefited from this particular program, from this particular MOU. All right. So it's not to again. This is not to study much. Now let's come back to the question. And therefore, the correct answer is what option E. Indra Gandhi National Open University, which in short is IGNU. Now moving ahead to question number three, for how many years? Very, very important question. For how many years the tenure of National Commission for Safai Karamcharis has been extended by the Union Cabinet? It will, if this question can come in your ESI section, jo ESI section hota hai, aapka RBI grade B ka wahan pe aa sakta hai, directly one mark mein kisi bhi exam mein pucha ja sakta hai. All right. And so for how many years the tenure of this National, Safai, National Commission for Safai Karamcharis has been extended? So remember, it has been extended for a period of three years, its tenure was uh, is going to end on 31st March 2022. Because this March 2022 tenure end So it has been extended for a further period of three years. Now, National Commission for Safai Karamchari it has very broad objectives of giving recommendations to the government regarding specific programs for welfare of Safai Karamcharis to study and evaluate the existing welfare programs for Safai Karamcharis to investigate the cases of specific grievances of these people 
and of course to monitor the implementation of prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act of 2013 so it is a very important organization with respect to the safai karmacharis the uh, you know the people who are cleaning our environment all right remember this was established in the year 1993 in the year 1993 under the national commission for safai karmachari act of 2013 and after that it was the tenure of this commission was extended so many times and it ceased to have effect in the year 2004 as a statutory body statutory body ab ye nahi hai it ceased to have effect as a statutory body in the year 2004 and after 2004 its tenure has been extended through various resolutions in the parliament which means as of today it is not a statutory body it is it is established through the parliamentary resolutions all right क्योंकि स्टेट्यूटरी बॉडी का स्टेटस 2004 में इसका खत्म कर दिया गया था सो दे फॉर द गाइस करेक्ट आंसर इज व्हाट थ्री इयर्स नाउ मूविंग अहेड टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर हाउ मच अमाउंट हैज बीन अप्रूव्ड बाय यूनियन कैबिनेट एज इक्विटी इन्फ्यूजन इन इंडियन रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी डेवलपमेंट एजेंसी एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस वॉज अनाउंस इन दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर बजट जो इस फाइनेंशियल ईयर का बजट था उसमें अनाउंस किया गया था दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट Uh, will infuse some amount as equity infusion in the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. All right, remember IRDA. It is a mini ratna. It is a mini ratna category one under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, headed by Mr. Uh, R K Singh. R K Singh is the Minister of New and Renewable Energy and also the Minister of Power. And this uh, agency, it is basically a non-banking. It is a non-banking financing agency. non banking financing financing agency which has the responsibility of financing the renewable energy projects in the country hamare desh ke jo renewable energy projects hain unko finance karne ka kaam hai irda ka so the amount which has been approved by the union cabinet as the equity infusion is how much rupees 1500 crores all right and this amount remember guys will will enable irda to lend rupees 1200 crore to the renewable energy sector to enhance its net worth which will help in which will help irda in additional renewable energy financing and it will also definitely improve its crar ratio all right so this was about this news and that's why guys the correct answer is what option b rupees 1500 crores and now let's move ahead to the last question for today which is a very direct question we will not go into the details of this particular question because that is not important again in which northeastern state bamboo shoot processing and preservation program has been organized by northeast cane and bamboo development council so you should remember the name of this organization also which has organized this program and it has been organized in meghalaya option c it was organized in meghalaya mein and of course the objective of this program guys is to provide livelihood opportunities livelihood opportunities especially to the women uh, especially to the women and tribal people of this area all right so option c meghalaya is the correct answer to this question so guys that's it for the session today i hope all the questions are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section i'll see you in the next session on monday thank you so much for watching goodbye take care and god bless